this is currently our home office. Um, if you followed previously, you may have noticed that the space has changed a little bit. Um, so a couple of weeks ago, I took out um, our dog crate, which used to be over here, um, because our puppy, he doesn't sleep in it and he sleeps downstairs with us. Um, and as the crate takes up quite a lot of space, we decided to get rid of it. And then instead, we brought up one of uh, Eric's old IKEA sofas. Um, but I think right now, because the sofa and the wall is very similar in color, um, which is like a dark navy color, um, I'm not sure if it's really working well for the space because now this side of the room is really dark and heavy versus the opposite side, which is very light and airy. So it feels a little bit unbalanced to me. So what I'm thinking about doing is actually changing the wall to a lighter, like a muted green color. And I'm thinking of probably adding some wood slats to this white wall over here to kind of just bring some warmth into the space. And lastly, we have a very old light. I think it's probably been here since the 1970s. So um, yeah, I'm actually thinking of changing that to a more simple and modern light. Um, and that should help to complete the space. But to get a really crisp line around your accent wall, uh, what you do is first stick your green tape. Make sure when you're sticking it, you don't cover any of the old accent wall color, leave a little bit of white. Um, next thing you want to do is add a streak of white paint on the side that touches your accent wall. So for me, it will be over here. Um, and I'm using white because my original wall color is white. So if your original wall color is a different color, I use a different color. And then once you've added your original color and let it dry, and then you can add on your new um, accent wall color um, over here. And yeah, by doing that, once you remove all the tape, you'll see that you get a really crisp um, straight line around your whole accent wall. Here is a mock-up of the wooden slats. There are two ways that I can cut the base of the slat because it sits on top of a baseboard. One is either I leave it as is, so it's like a very square finish and has like a very um, long overhang over the baseboard, or I can give it kind of a 45 degree cut in one of the corners and leave a little bit of a straight edge at the end so it has an area to sit on top of the baseboard. Um, so far, I'm kind of leaning towards the 45 degree cut as it has a more finished look. So the way that I cut this is, um, here is kind of a drawing from the side view. So basically what I did was I first measured the length of the sledge on top of the baseboard. Um, so my one is one quarter inch. So I'm going to leave a one quarter inch straight edge on this baseboard over here. And then after the one quarter inch straight edge, I'm going to give it a 45 degree cut upwards. So that's this part here. Yeah, so this is kind of the side view of how I cut this wooden slat. So to make my work more efficient, as I need to get the one quarter inch measurement for all my wood, and the small measurements are kind of hard to do with a ruler each time. So basically I just took a scrap piece of wood. I measured out what one quarter inch distance is, as you can see over here. Um, and then I'm using the scrap wood to use as a ruler and mark all the one quarter inch measurements onto all my wood pieces that I'm going to cut. Here we have the finished cut so you can see it's the same as the drawing we have a one quarter inch flat base and then a 45 degree angle cut upwards Thank you. 
So I've just finished sanding the three front surfaces of my wooden slat. Next I'm going to um, go over the two edges and kind of round out and bevel the edge to give it a more finished look. To do this I'm just going to take the sander, apply it on the edge at a slight angle and I'm going to run from end to end and make sure I try to apply even pressure as I go. For each edge I will probably do say three or four runs for each side and whatever number I decide on I'll make sure that I do the same number for each edge for each stick of wood.